Yeah, thank you for inviting me for this uh, very rare occasion to have a presentation about the martial arts. So I'm uh, actually I was born in Korea, and most of my life in uh, I spent in Korea. But now I live in uh, in the Netherlands, so it's very near here. Uh, when I was young, uh, like uh, this morning. I had a lot of nostalgic experience with the martial arts films, and so I was very much fascinated by the martial arts films at that time. And uh, I, you know, the typical martial arts story: the, the main character was a soccer from, uh, and then he has to revenge. So he found the guy who teaches him martial arts, and then uh, all the time uh, it's related to a martial arts manual. It's a secret manual, so you got this manual and then you learn the special technique and then you can revenge. So I was fascinated by this story when I was young. So all the time I was looking for the, this uh, secretive manual. But, so I found something about the Shaolin uh, and the martial arts and then I studied, I tried to study uh, by myself. So maybe one week and then I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> It's impossible to learn martial arts by uh, reading book. <clears throat> but later, I realized this martial arts manual. Uh, if you want to read and understand martial arts manual, then you need background the knowledge about martial arts. Without background information, you cannot actually. If you don't know about science, and then uh, but you know the English. So even though you know English, that you cannot read the science book without uh, the knowledge about the science. So that was my uh, the start, beginning of journey. And then later I entered university. So my first major was uh, physics, and then switch it to martial art history. So <laughs> <laughs> so finally I'm here for this purpose. Okay, I'm going to start. Uh, this presentation, the main uh, theme about the Japanese martial arts, but I'm going to focus on dissemination of Japanese martial arts to Korea. More historical perspective. So here, most people know the Korea, Japan, and China, and the Japan and Korea are very near, actually. So in seventies, nineteen seventies, a Korean swimmer he swam across this uh, Korean Strait. The Japanese called uh, Japanese Strait. <laughs> 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 and, uh, the same thing. Uh. <laughs> so very near and historically, geographically very close, and historically, culturally, it's really close closely related, these three countries, and the one culture start originate one country and then to another, and then transform or promote new cultures is very common. And the martial arts uh, was saying, so these days uh, like Kendo, Aikido, Judo, or Taekwondo, and come and go and develop in each country. So now I'm going to start the history of uh, so this is a map about the Imjin War in Korean. So in Japanese, uh, they call it differently. <laughs> in China as well, the Bullock no Eki, and the Wani uh, Wani War in uh, Chinese. <clears throat> so martial uh, Japanese martial arts, more specifically, Japanese swordsmanship, so disseminated to Korea. The, through this uh, war, but before uh, this war was uh, in between 1592 and uh, 1598, so almost like a seven years uh, war. Uh, historical records, uh, there are a lot of historical records about the uh, Japanese martial arts, and then we can see Probably Japanese martial arts uh, spread to Korea before this period, but we cannot uh, find out the real records 
what kind of Japanese martial arts. But it's all about uh, there was a conflict between uh, ancient Korea and Japan, and, uh, and the Japanese souls are like, uh, uh, presented to uh, the Korean government, or all this kind of stories. But not exactly what kind of Japanese swordsmanship spread, transmitted to Korea, and we cannot find that uh, record. But through this, uh, during this Imjin War, there's uh, some historical records about dissemination of Japanese uh, swordsmanship. So this war, you can see the, this uh, three uh, different uh, lines so from uh, the Busan. So the war starts from here. So Japanese uh, came to this uh, the area, the, the southeastern coast, and then <clears throat> they divided the three uh, armies, troops, and uh, in 20 days, they uh, conquered the capital city of Korea. So, which means, actually, there was uh, no uh, resistance from uh, Korea. Almost uh, like uh, if you, at that time, if you arrive at Busan, and then uh, you walk to uh, Seoul, then 20 days, maybe, uh, you can walk there, arrive at uh, Seoul, uh, Seoul. So, this war, and then after this happening, Korean government tried to analyze uh, how do we deal with this uh, situation. And uh, even uh, Seoul was uh, conquered by Japanese army and then the king and his people escaped the capital city and they ran away on the almost the borderline of uh, China and Korea. And then they realized um, So this is one scene from uh, the Japanese the attacks battle at Busanjin. The, this is this battle is in the Pyongyang Castle. So from 1902 to 193, so there were like a four battles. Then the finally Joseon at that time of Korea, the Joseon won with the assistance of uh, uh, Ming China's the aid, so they won. And then uh, they realized uh, what's, what's wrong with us. The problem was, uh, at that time, the Korea was armed with basically cavalry. The main threat to uh, Joseon dynasty was uh, the northern part of the uh, uh, so northern Jurchen and uh, those uh, the horsemen basically their threat. So counter, to, to counter this northern threat, then uh, Joseon has to arm with the same kind of uh, the mobility, so basically on horsemen. And uh, of course, uh, from a distance, they used uh, firearm at that time, and then archery. But eventually, you have to chase after the, these enemies then uh, by horse. So mainly this uh, the military uh, tactic and the martial arts, the archery and the horse riding skills, and they were, they were the, the main uh, strategy, tactics. But in, during the Imjin War, these tactics uh, actually uh, didn't work well because the Japanese armies were armed with uh, arquebus. So they have an advantage of this uh, long distance uh, attack. So usually, Korean archery was uh, like a uh, reach uh, longer than the Japanese, uh, Japanese bow. So in the past, then uh, from a distance, the Korean uh, attack with the archery, and then uh, eventually they uh, used the cavalry. And so Japanese specialty was uh, sword art, the fencing. But the fencing, they couldn't uh, apply because before using this uh, close quarter combat, the, the, the battle was over. But in this uh, engine war, during this engine war, this uh, the traditional strategy doesn't, uh, didn't work anymore. And then this uh, Pyongyang castle, the battle in the Pyongyang castle, the main forces in the Chinese uh, the troops was uh, Southern troops. 
So it's a part of the. So here the this coastal the area and the south of Korea are all are suffered from uh, Japanese uh, pirates, Wako. And then these Chinese uh, southern troops are trained by were trained by uh, General Qi Ji Guang's uh, tactics. So General Qi Ji Guang's tactics is the same as uh, similar to from a distance. They uh, use a firearm, and then uh, in a close combat, then they use a special formation. That's what they call a uh, Mandarin dog formation. So later I will explain that one. So this formation worked very well. So and then Joseon government inspired by this uh, tactic. Oh yeah, then uh, we have to import this tactic and martial arts. So from that moment, Joseon government tried to uh, introduce this uh, new uh, method. So the, in the words, we can say like uh, Japan and Korea. Then uh, Japan was, uh, uh, we if we uh, simplify. Uh, the situation then Japan was uh, foot soldiers, archers, and uh, the fencing techniques in the close combat. And Korea was cavalry, firearm, and archery. So tactic and martial arts, uh, like uh, Japan was uh, superior to uh, Korea. So that was uh, the reason. And then uh, in the close combat, the, there was a, a lot of uh, uh, expressions in the, the Korean side uh, records. The one of the records, like if the enemy only rushes to death, all Joseon soldiers fell down helplessly, shedding blood on the enemy's wicked blade. Even though they have swords and spears, they didn't have a chance to draw and use them. So Japanese uh, fencing was so much uh, impressive. So this is a Mandarin the, the formation. So basically, General, the Ming China, General Qi Ji Bang developed this uh, Mandarin dog formation. Basically, it's because man-to-man -man fight, then uh, Chinese or Korean cannot beat Japanese. So then uh, how can we uh, deal with the situation? So this is uh, like a kind of team building method. So they made <laughs> 12 people and uh, one unit. Okay, you are the, the one uh, team. So if one of them died in the battlefield, then the, the military rules, then uh, this all unit will be dead as a punishment. So you have to back up the others. So that is uh, the idea. And then the right side is uh, the, um, the weapons they are carrying. So first two are shears, and then the next two are thorn spears, and the four are the long spears, and the last was trident. It's so a combination of these uh, weapons. And then uh, when they start fighting, then uh, these shears are go forward, and then these uh, thorn spears are back up, this uh, first line, and then the main uh, attackers are these uh, four long spears. And then the, the, the last, uh, like two uh, tridents, uh, they can use uh, the firearms as well. And then the last one is, uh, uh, he's a cook. <laughs> <laughs> so he carries, uh, he, he does all kinds of chores. And then when battle starts, then he uh, backs out. And then they gather together and then uh, they, uh, they belongs to another uh, unit. <clears throat> but if he does it well, then he can be promoted to as a part of this main uh, warriors. So Japanese fencing and the Korean government witnessed. Okay, so Japanese strategy in a distance they use uh, this uh, archivus, and then once they start this uh, close quarter combat, then Japanese fencing is so much indomitable. So Joseon has to, uh, first uh, they have to uh, introduce this uh, Mandarin duck formation. So, um, so all this process, uh, they develop these uh, four different martial arts manuals. 
And then each manual, the first one illustrates the manual of martial arts, so Muye Jago. And there's a Jango. Jango is like a long saber. The Japanese uh, the fencing. And the second one translated the sequel to illustrate the manual of martial arts in uh, 1610. There was a wagon. So wagon is literally means uh, Japanese uh, sword. But here as a combat form, so two persons like a training method. And then third, new illustrated manual of martial arts, here wagon. But this manual uh, not extend. But we can see the between the, these uh, different manuals that <coughs> the contents, we can find out uh, what martial arts are, were there included. And then the last one, comprehensive in illustrated manual of martial arts, Muedo Tongji, 1790. So here, uh, Japanese sword and combat form as well. So first, uh, there are like a two ways the Joseon government introduced uh, Japanese fencing. So one is uh, through uh, Chinese. So Chinese troops were in Korea to join this uh, engine war. And then, uh, the, so Joseon government sent some uh, soldiers to uh, Chinese camps, and then they learned the martial arts from Chinese. And then uh, in this martial arts, Japanese swordmanship was included. So that is one way. And then after that, Joseon government directly learned from Japanese as well. So there was uh, like a two ways to import introduce uh, Japanese uh, fencing. So first, uh, this uh, long saber, this one come to uh, Korea through Japanese, uh, Chinese uh, troops. So there was uh, like a, uh, this long saber, then the overall length is like a 137 centimeter. So maybe for Westerners, it doesn't sound too long, but Average the Asian the height, and then at that time, then uh, like uh, 150, approximately 150, or between 150 and 155 centimeter. Then uh, this sword is like uh, almost uh, the, the, the same height, so it was long. And the blade is like a 150, uh, 15, and the handle 30 for, uh, 31 centimeter, and the weight like a 1,500 gram. So average waist saber at that time, then uh, like a 90 centimeter. So this is a quite a long uh, saber. So even this long saber, this is not exactly related to uh, today's uh, the topic. This is a Chinese martial arts manual. So when this uh, long saber was introduced to China first, then after that, it was like a 1561 introduced to China. After that, spread the, throughout China as well. So this manual from uh, China. And then uh, the first uh, drawing is about uh, how to draw the sword. Because its blade is too long, so you cannot draw one time. So first, uh, like a halfway, and then you take over the backside of the blade, and then pull, and then chain. So that is the explanation of uh, how to draw this uh, long saber. But it's uh, two steps. It's not the one time. You have to pull out halfway and then again take. So the best way in an emergency case, then uh, you and your colleague so together <laughs> pull out the sword and then fight. So that was uh, the explanation of uh, this long saber. I just want to say about uh, how long this uh, saber. So General Qi Jigang, and uh, there was a Taiju battle in uh, 1561. So he got acquired this uh, Japanese uh, martial arts manual, the Shin Gakeryu. So today, uh, uh, from Japanese side, I had a very interesting uh, story about uh, it's a sword manship. But I think this is the oldest manual extent. So at least it traces back 1561. So I haven't seen any other older 
uh, material. But anyway, so General Chi Ji-gang found this uh, manual about uh, Kageryu. And the Shin Kageryu actually come from uh, this, uh, after this. So the Ice Eco is uh, a founder of this uh, sword school. And then later, Kami uh, is me, uh, the Shin Kageryu, the founder of Shin Kageryu, and then all the current Shin, the Shin Kageryu style actually traces back to this uh, the martial arts manual. And then uh, General Chi ji got this uh, martial arts manual, and then this martial arts uh, the system, fencing system, are adopted as a Chinese military training part of Chinese military training. But the point, uh, in the, this is uh, from uh, 1561, the Ji Xiao Xinxu. But this is all. The courtesy, the writing, and there's uh, like the MP, Ankai, uh, and the, what we call the secrets. There are some secrets ex explanations. And then, and then only this uh, drawing. So Kage literally means a school of a shadow. So the shadow shape uh, and nothing else with this. So the first part is uh, the from actually from Japanese uh, scroll. And then Chiji Gwang add, added this part, so only the postures. And there's another one. So first, uh, so he got this manual, uh, scrolls 1561, and then uh, his uh, martial arts, uh, the, the book, there are like two versions, but uh, this is a 14 uh, edition, Ji Xiao Xinxu, in 1584, they add, he added this one. And then later, 1621, the Mao Yemi, another Chinese military uh, leader, and he, in his book, then this drawing changes into a monkey. Uh. So the story about, the original story about the Kageryu, then uh, Aisu Iko, he uh, had a dream about, uh, you know, the, like a monkey, the, the came in his dream, and then he uh, transmitted the, uh, uh, sword, and uh, so that was uh, the story about. It. Yeah. And then uh, when it's come to Korea, then uh, in Korea, then uh, they added all the names of the posture. So they put the names. The first retreat defensive posture, and then the right side is about uh, how to organize these uh, techniques. So these days we call it uh, kata or in Chinese, Tao uh, Ru. So this is uh, the later version of uh, Korean uh, martial arts manual, Muye Dogo Tongji. But you can see, this is uh, the earlier, like a late 16th century. Then uh, you can see the right hand, he holds the blade part. So it was a long saber, and then there's a Actually, habaki is longer than uh, the standard size sword. So at that time, he can hold that blade part. But after 200 years, then uh, this fashion long sword, this fashion of long sword, uh, didn't exist anymore. And then they uh, changed it in a normal size uh, sword. So the name of the swordmanship, sword art, and the techniques are virtually the same. But they don't use it the long saber anymore. So in Korea, and then uh, they change it with a standard side sword. And this Ji uh, Xiao Xinxu, okay, here's uh, the name. There are names of the posture, but this Ji Xiao Xinxu is uh, published in Korea. So this is a Korean version of Ji Xiao Xinxu. So in the, all the naming of the postures are done in the in Korea, so not in China or so. And this early version of the the whole sequences, and then the, in the 1970, uh, 1790, we had Tongji then 
you can see it more clear. Every posture and the direction go forward and the back. So virtually straight line that you practice this uh, uh, sword magic come uh, forward and backward. But uh, what I'm uh, interested in uh, how they do uh, in, in Japan this uh, sword. Maybe the, we can compare this uh, swordmanship the differences uh, between uh, Korea, Koreanized Japanese the fencing with Japanese style the fencing. So that could be an interesting job tasks and then. <clears throat> So this sword machine, I'm not sure. That. This is uh, actually related to kageryo, but probably uh, quite different because it's uh, already Chinese nicest and then uh, Koreanized as well. So this is one thing, and then uh, during the Imjin War, Korean the government wants to learn the Japanese fencing from uh, directly to. Uh, Japan, and there were like uh, some Japanese uh, the surrenders or the war prisons, and some of them are like a very good uh, swordsmen. So they hired these people, and then uh, they made them taught, teach the Japanese fencing to the Korean soldiers. That's the, another way. And then there is one. Uh, the Korean man, the Kim Che Gon, so he transmitted four different Japanese uh, styles. So during the reign, uh, reign of King Suk Jong, so in between the 1647 to and the 1720, so he was uh, sent to uh, Japan as a part of the uh, uh, envoys. So he got uh, this uh, the manuals about four different schools. And then he learned this uh, Japanese sword fencing, fencing, and then he came back to Korea and uh, he started teaching. But these are a little bit ambiguous. If we uh, compare the historical record and uh, according to this Muedo uh, Botongji description, then there are some discrepancies between them. I think you should try it um, in the shop because if, if everyone does turn off, then. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some uh, these uh, nine schools, name of uh, nine schools, but these uh, names in, uh, we compare with the uh, Japanese uh, historical records. Then maybe uh, transcriptions, wrong errors in transcriptions or errors in translation. So. Let's see like this, the, the hojeon in Korean, then maybe a toda, and uh, there's a different uh, kanji, later I will show you, and then jungne, uh, takeuchi, togun. So similar transcriptions, so maybe there are error. So soya, ono, yagyu, and the, so we can find some school's name in the Japanese uh, records, but uh, some are not. So this is uh, the four schools, Toyuryu and uh, Wungangyu. So Wungangyu may be uh, in Japanese, uh, Wunkoryu. And the Toyuryu in Korean, then maybe it's related to Todaryu. And then these two, Kim Chaegon learned in uh, Japan, but uh, there's no this uh, school in Japan. So that is uh, the problem. And there's a sword combat. Uh, developed from this uh, style, four scores. And this is the system how to test the people at the time. The high, high, middle, low, and the nine grades. And uh, this is the uh, combat. Okay, so comparison with the, this uh, historical record, the Chinese side, Korea, and Japan, then uh, Koreanization of the Japanese fencing, the most uh, prominent features is like a formalizing of techniques. So the like a one line as a kata style. Start one position and then go up and down or whatever, and then back. So this is, a, even though it's a combat style, the, they, they organize as a formalizing form, the standardization. So Professor 
Oh, already uh, mentioned uh, this uh, standardization has uh, the good advantages and disadvantages as well. So we have to consider this. And then the modern part, I couldn't uh, deal with this time, but for the next time. Okay, thank you for. Thank you. Can I propose that we, we take uh, Yahoo's presentation and we discuss just uh, because we might have extra time, but we might not have extra time. Yeah, yeah. So we can we can take questions for yours and uh, yeah. later. Yeah. yeah is that okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just just so we play safe, because my fear is they'll kick us out of here at five o'clock, whatever happens, and it would be really sad for someone to be halfway through the presentation. Is that okay? <laughs> So, thank you very much. We'll, we'll, we'll...